So welcome to part two of the perspective question. So in part one, I covered the perspective setup, which we have here. And now in part two, I'm going to draw the block shape, which is the 3D representation here and the plan view here, down in the perspective view, down between the ground line and the horizon line, okay? So when I'm doing these perspective questions, the first thing I do after I have the setup done, I was shown a few years ago, which I found quite handy, was I change the orientation of the sheet, okay? So, take off my tape of the sheet. And instead of lining the bottom of the sheet up with the T-square like we would normally, I'm gonna line either the picture plane, the horizon line or the ground line up with the T-square. So, and this one I'll do the picture plane. So you can see the way I'm lining the picture plane up horizontally with my T-square. And I tape my sheet down again. I might be able to exactly tape it in the corners now. Because the sheet might be sticking out. Tape the sheet down there. Like so. Okay, and what this is after doing now, right, is after speeding up my task quite a bit. Instead of having to use sliding set squares to go parallel to this bisector line I created, I can now just place my set square on my T-square and it'll draw the line straight down. It's just after speeding up the whole process for me, basically. So, the next step I need to do, okay, is I need to get a line down here in my ground line that I can measure my vertical distances off of, okay? So, as the picture plane crosses through corner A, I can use this corner as a height line, is what I call it, okay? So, in order to get this line down on ground line, the first thing I need to do is join A to the spectator which I have done then where that line crosses the picture plane which is at point A because the picture plane crosses through point A I bring straight down to my ground line okay so I'm gonna put this line in in what I put it in I put it in green okay I'll just do a little note over here so we know. So that's my vertical height line. H E height line. So every vertical height, so how high the block is in reality, vertical heights will be measured off on this line, okay? So from the question, I know that the vertical height of the block is 40 millimeters so I can do a little mark, mark there for 40 so 0 is down here on the ground line and 40 is where that pencil line is there now okay so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring down the extreme sides of the object okay so as I said we join the point of the object to the spectator where that line crosses the picture plane we can project that line straight down okay Exact same over in this corner, draw the drawing the point to the spectator where this crosses will be brought straight down. Okay, so now I have a series of lines, but they're not making much sense yet. Okay, so what we must actually do now is where these vanishing points come into come into play. Okay, so I can vanish any point that I know on this true lint line or this vertical height line. Okay. So the first one I'm going to vanish back to VP2 and the 40 mil line, height 40 mil line, I'm going to vanish back to VP2. Okay. I'm going to do the exact same then back to VP1. Both points back to VP1. And then if you'll notice already, there's little bits of the shape showing 
showing flourishing already okay so i can join from this line back to my lint line here no and follow my vanishing point line across same here then with the front of the block or the face front face of the block so i'm developing parts of the perspective already okay i continue this process throughout so i join from a point to the spectator where that line cuts the picture plane is brought down so we can see it beginning to take some bit of shape now or object So we join the point to the spectator where it cuts the picture plane and bring it straight down. And then all these horizontal lines are just either vanished to VP1 or VP2. And you'll know which one you're vanishing to by kind of looking at it basically. So all these direction lines go to VP1, or these direction lines go to VP2. That's basically how you know. You just kind of know by the by the drawing itself. So it's just repetition at repetition after that. Join to the spectator. Bring it down where it crosses the picture plane. We vanish that point. Okay. I also find it easier to kind of go over the object with my darker pencil as I'm drawing as I'm bringing down my points because at times it can get get a little confusing if you leave it all to the end so I'll join my point to the spectator where it crosses the picture plane just fall straight down
So now the shape is beginning to take a little more Four one hundred points down there. And we know what this line here is. Now finally, my last square, which I actually have a lot of the points bought down already. So that's one of the points there. And find this point, giant to spectator, right across the picture plane, it comes straight down. So it's there. And then we can join this vanishing point to get this location here. Join this point that I'd found over here back to the vanishing point again. So that now it's a solution, it's a perspective solution to the drawing we were given. Okay, so even if we wanted to kind of Shade in what areas we had here, right? So this is kind of the top of the block. Down the leg. So what I'm doing here now, right, is I'm shading these with the same colours that I shaded the three D, so we can see what's actually represented where. So this is the side of the block. and the inner detailed parts of the block. So if I just pull this down now to my 3D sketch we can see the block in the 3D sketch, in the perspective, and the plan view. So that's how video one showed the setup of a perspective question. And this video here now is after dealing with how we actually um, use that setup in order to create the shape, the perspective view of the shape. Uh, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and add any comments into the videos.